Right, this is the notes for section 12.2, reviews, uh, a review of ratios and proportions. If you haven't done so already, make sure you read the section before continuing on with these notes. So basically, most of the stuff that we're doing in this, in this section should be stuff that you should be familiar with as it pertains to ratios and proportions. Um, first of all, what is a ratio? Remember, the definition of a ratio is a quotient of two numbers or a comparison Another way of thinking about that is the word comparison between two numbers. Okay, and we can write it as m over n, m slash n, and even sometimes we write it with a colon between them. In in all of those cases, it means a comparison between m and n, or m divided by n, that fraction. Okay. In order for us to have a ratio, m and n must be quantities that are of the same kind, such as lengths, uh, perimeters, populations, areas. But they have to be something that is is of the same kind. Okay. When we talk about a proportion, a proportion uses ratios, and it's actually a statement that says that two ratios are equal to each other. Okay. So if if we look at this situation says proportions arise when a figure is transformed by size change. Okay, so anytime we do a size change, we get proportions, and we're going to need to use proportions quite a bit as we work with size changes. It says when triangle ABC is a size transformation of XYZ, the sides of the triangle are proportional. So if I look at all of the way I have this set up here, if I look at AB compared to XY. Well, those sides correspond with each other. The ratio between those corresponding sides are all equal. Okay, but this right here, any pair of these or or any statement like this would represent a proportion. So anytime we're saying ratios are equal to each other, we have a proportion. So if we have a proportion, we can use the means extremes property to solve for a proportion. And what the means extremes property says is that if A over B is equal to C over D, then we can do cross multiplication and say that these values, AD, are equal to these values, BC. So if I take the product of, well, A and D are considered the extremes, and B and C, the product of that would be considered the means. Okay, so the the extremes are the first term and the last term, and the means are the middle terms. Okay, so and and we can use that. It doesn't have to just be you know A D equals B C. We could write this as A D over B equals C. We could write it as a equals BC over D. So we can do that in any way. We can always um, go use that cross multiplication piece as we're as we're solving a proportion. And we'll, anytime we're use, doing that, we're using the means extremes property. Right, take a look at example one here. It says we're going to do a size S sub K on triangle MNP. Remember that's a size change of magnitude K on that triangle to get its its image. <clears throat> we know that MP is twelve, NP is nine, and M prime P prime is five. Find N prime P prime. Okay, so let's label that stuff on our drawing. MP is twelve, so we want to label that first. We know that NP is 9, and we know M prime P prime is 5. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to use a really important fact about size changes, and that is that the ratio between corresponding sides in a size change, the ratios between corresponding sides in size changes are always equal. Okay, They set up. We can set up a proportion. Okay, so if that's the case, let's let's use that information to set up our proportion. So I generally try and keep things as image over preimage. 
Uh, now, as we move through, there's going to be times when we don't necessarily new, need to do that, but it, it's easiest to kind of keep that in mind so that when we do need it, we, we're still doing that. So if I take my image, which is 5, so the image M prime, P prime, which is 5, and put it over its corresponding uh, pre-image distance, which is 12, that has to be equal to, well, I want to compare NP to N prime P prime. So I'm going to say N prime pre, so I've got the, the image on top, so it's going to be N prime P prime on top and 9 on bottom. So once I have that proportion set up, I can cross multiply and solve. So I can say 5 times 9 is equal to 12 times n prime p prime. And then I can divide both sides by 12. If I do that, I'll have what n prime p prime is. So on your, you've got 5 times 9 divided by 12, which is 45 over 12. which equals 15 fourths, okay? Or you could also write that if you wanted to write it as a decimal, um, that would be 3 and 3 fourths, or 3.75. So either one of these answers would work for the length of n prime p prime. <laughs>